Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. So, good evening guys and uh, welcome back. So, today we will try to understand one more uh, very very important interview questions. So, which is like you know, whoops concept uh, used in your uh, framework. So, before going to that, uh, I request all of you to like you know, please uh, do uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. If you like my content, uh, definitely please do that guys. So, it will motivate me to uh, come up with interesting topics for you guys. Please don't miss to uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. So, let us uh, start uh, with the whoops concept used in your automation framework. Because like you know, say for example, uh, any automation framework you take built based on Java, it should always be like you know, built based on the whoops concepts so whoops concept uh, are the basic foundation for uh, the programming or the for the framework or whatever it is because that is where uh, we reduce lot of uh, writing the codes and all and make the code secure and make the code flexible and scalable so that is the reason so let us start discussing one by one so the very first thing is encapsulation guys so encapsulation is basically like you know uh, making the variables and methods as private so that the uh, outside of the class so nobody can be able to access those kind of a uh, variables or uh, methods so even uh, if you want to like you know uh, provide the access to those particular variables and methods outside of the class so you have to provide the getters and setters methods so getters and set setters methods to access outside of the class so the primary intention is only in that particular class you should be able to access those methods and uh, the variables so you just have to uh, make the variables as the private so that is the reason so you will not be able to access outside of the class so we will be writing all the uh, our web elements right so we will be locating all our web elements and we will be like you know writing them as a private so that is the standard practice we are doing in our automation frameworks so that is the reason so that is where uh, we are using one uh, place encapsulation so that outside of the class they will not be able to access it in within the class we will be able to access those kind of a web elements so that is one thing and variables also you can make it as uh, private so that they will not outside of the class nobody can be able to access uh, the variables and methods so that's about the encapsulation so then comes uh, like you know uh, inheritance so inheritance is basically one more uh, interesting and very very uh, important feature of uh, java so say for example uh, all our uh, the web driver initiations and uh, like you know some of the common methods like wait and click methods and wait based on the conditions wait based on after meeting the expectations also say different different weights strategies we can do it so that will be uh, uh, used all across the framework right so those kind of a things we will be putting it into the base class and we will be making it as a parent class so whenever we write the child classes we will be using the extend keyword and we will be extending that particular base class in all our page classes so that all the methods in the uh, parent class can be accessed in the child class inherently so those we don't need to create an object and we don't need to do any kind of an extra activity to access those particular methods so we can just call as if that method is available in that particular chat class so that is what the inheritance is so inheritance is basically it will take all the variables and methods into the child class as its own so that is what the inheritance is so one such example uh, in our framework is like you know base class so keeping all the uh, uh, web driver initiation and uh, common methods or whichever it, 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 it depends guys like the one who designs the framework he has to decide what to keep and what not to keep so we can uh, that uh, that is up to them so they will decide and it's not something that only these things only we have to keep it like that it's based on the requirement and it's based on the convenience they can keep it in the base class and you can they can utilize it further so in the all the child classes so that is about uh, inheritance so then comes uh, the polymorphism so the polymorphism as the name itself suggests uh, the same method will be having the multiple behaviors so that is what the polymorphism is so one such beautiful example is method overloading so method overloading is basically the method name is same and the, the parameters will be different right so that is what the uh, method overloading is so one such very very beautiful example i can tell you is like you know click uh, click on uh, clicking on the web element so we can click on the web element by using the locator also by using the web element also so based on whatever we want to pass we can pass it 
so one more such beautiful example is that say for example assume it's a login page so login page can be uh, logged in using the username and password and uh, logged in we can do the login uh, with uh, the single sign on like uh, google microsoft and linkedin facebook instagram so like that so there will, there are couple of things to log in couple couple of ways to log in so in that cases we can uh, define one single method uh, as a login and like you know it can take different different parameters to do uh, to do the login so in that case so we will avoid say for example if you create login 1 login 2 login 3 login instagram login facebook login linkedin login uh, username and password so that uh, we will not be able to remember all those methods so with the different different names for a login while calling say for example if i wrote that implementation i'll be remembering it say for example if the new guy is coming into our automation project if he has to start working on that so it will be so difficult for him to get to know all those things right so instead of that keep one single method like login method name itself is login so you write two different login methods one is for username and password one is for single sign on so single sign on can take the parameter as google or microsoft or linkedin or instagram whatever it is so the login username and password will perform the login based on the username and password so that is how we can implement it and we can call it whenever we want or wherever we want we can achieve the polymorphism like this so and also like we can achieve the uh, runtime polymorphism there is one more thing called method overloading so that will be comes under the inheritance i mean sorry interface interface concept so there will be a methods in the parent class so they they can have the implementation or they cannot have the implementation also in that situation in the child class if we want to change the implementation of that particular uh, method so we can freely we can go ahead and we can do that so whenever we create an object of the child class so that the new implementation will come to the picture so, so the the best example for that is like an interest rate say for example rbi has set the interest rate for the home loan as some six percent but when it comes to the bank if they set as the rbi bank they how they will make the profit rate so they will uh, there will be a difference so <coughs> they can raise it to 6.5 or 6.7 so rbi is the parent class and say for example hdfc bank class is going to implement that particular method so they can make it as seven percent so the icic bank can make it 6.5 or some other bank can make it as six they can keep it still keep it to six so there is no issue with that so whenever uh, there are multiple child classes one parent class and one method so in that case each and every child class have that freedom to implement their own strategies to implement their own logics so that is what it meant for method uh, overriding so these are the two types of uh, polymorphism comes into the picture so one is method overloading one is method overriding okay i hope you are clear with this okay so then comes uh, abstraction guys so the data abstraction basically comes into the picture is like hiding the implementation and showing the uh, functionality to the user right so this is very very important concept because our web driver is an interface and uh, if you look at the java uh, all the collections uh, collection framework if you start working on the collection framework a majority of uh, the array list uh, and uh, like you know the sets and list and collection itself is an interface so here this is very very important thing to understand the uh, interface so the interface is basically like you know setting the rules so as i take the previous example as a bank rbi bank is an interface which is setting the rules like it should be six percent interest rate for one loan so that is setting the rules but it is not necessarily that the child classes cannot override they can override there are circumstances we need to override so in those cases we have to override the child class methods so that is what uh, the abstraction is that is what uh, the uh, data abstraction using the interface so in the interface there will be methods which are unimplemented say for example uh, the car uh, there is a method in the car class which is having a steering which is having a features four features or some five features or whatever it is so they are setting the methods in the interface in the child classes they can implement however they want so that is where in the parent class they are defining the rules it is not necessarily uh, 
they are the they are they are implemented or they may not be implemented but in the child class we have to implement it so there are restriction to implement in the interface also because only static and default methods can be implemented in the interface the rest of other methods should be unimplemented methods so in that case uh, in the child classes we have to implement them so say for example if you look at uh, the i test listener is the best example so they have set the uh, rules like you have to on test success on test failure on test uh, skipped so these are the methods they have defined so as an user as an end user we have to implement however we want based on our requirement so that is what the data abstraction or the interface is so when it comes to the testing uh, in the testing field so the moment when we talk about interface <coughs> everybody is talking about uh, the i test listener i test listener right so it is not only about the i test listener guys uh, you can implement your own interfaces as well you can set your own uh, uh, rules as well so it based on the requirements say for example if you are working with the excel utility based on multiple conditions say for example if there is one condition one implementation if other condition other implementation in that case you can define one interface which will be having a standard method in the child classes you can implement your own methods so that is what the interface is right so that is how uh, we can uh, think of it so it's up to uh, the programmer how they are going to use the programming concepts so in the uh, real time so it is not necessarily uh, that uh, you have to use only these kind of things and all so if you even if you look at the web driver interface also why i am stressing the interfaces because uh, majority of the question comes on interface when the question comes so if you don't know much of the details so we'll not be having an answer for it so that is the reason even if you look at the web driver interface launching the driver and launching the method so all those methods are there in the interface so in the respective browser classes say for example chrome driver class web uh, firefox driver class and uh, edge browser class so in those classes they have implemented their own implementation with respect to the chrome driver is not dependent on the edge browser edge is not dependent on the uh, firefox browser so they have their own implementation but the web driver interface is the one one who is setting the rules so they have defined their methods so they are implementing in the child classes so that is what the interface is so i hope uh, you liked uh, it so if you like my content please hit the like button share and subscribe to my channel guys so that i will come up with new uh, such interesting content thank you thank you so very much for watching guys thank you thank you so much